What better today, friend? Welcome to the Advantage Joy at Work podcast. I'm thrilled that you've joined me here as I help marketplace leaders unstuck their true potential to thrive in life and leadership, to build successful, sustainable business with collaborative, high-performance teams and joy at work with practical, neuroscience-based Advantage guides and coaching. If you need an outside voice with a fresh perspective to challenge and empower you, your team or business to a new level of performance and engagement, then let's talk now. Do you dare to have joy at work? Now that we know why joy at work matters, and if you don't, then pop back and listen to that Advantage Guide first. But now it's time to let you know about a battle that's going on inside your own brain. Imagine a battlefield with two opposing sides. Only one side doesn't realise that it's in a battle. The enemy is steadily picking them off one by one. There's no retaliation, just acceptance. Que sera, sera, life is difficult. What do you expect me to do? They're bigger, they're more important, they're smarter, slimmer, richer, stronger, prettier, older, younger, senior, more talented, more experienced, better connected, luckier. Did I miss yours? Just add it to the list. In my experience, there are two types of leader who struggle the most in this battle. The first type, those who secretly believe that they're not good enough. We'll call these people the imposters. Secondly, those who need to be recognised as significant and important. We'll call these the egomaniacs. Let's begin with the imposters. These are people who often secretly think about how they're somehow lacking, but they don't want anyone else to know it. Instead, They have to be seen as invulnerable, stoic, you know, stiff upper lip and all that chaps. Whatever you do, don't let your emotions show, because in that lies weakness. And when people see that I'm weak, they'll attack and destroy me. Inside, they're ashamed to be living a lie and they're afraid to empathise. So they don't open up to deep relationships or dare to ask for what they truly desire. And they struggle for worthiness. They desperately want to be liked by others for who they are. But they dare not show who they are because they don't actually like themselves very much. Instead, they allow the enemy to chip away, wear them down, thinking that they deserve it because they're not good enough. So what about the egomaniacs? All these people have an ego that makes them overestimate their own abilities and worth, and they underestimate the effort and skill required to achieve their goals. They feel superior to and better than others, and they need to be recognised for their significant greatness. Ego is the outsized sense of self-importance. It is the toxic force that makes real teamwork, empathy, vulnerability and artistry impossible. It's a quote by Ryan Holiday from his fabulous book, Ego is the Enemy. The enemy simply has to poke the bear and the egomaniac inflicts damage to themselves and they bully and blame everyone and anyone else and their own team. Some imposters protect themselves by becoming egomaniacs. And it's really easy to flip from the other to one in six steps, as Brenny Brown shares in Dare to Lead about the armour we use to protect our vulnerability. Here's six pieces of armour from imposter, I'm not good enough, to egomaniac, I'm better than them. Firstly, I'm really not good enough. You've got imposter syndrome. Second, but if I'm open and honest about this, people will think less of me or even use it against me. 
That's shame. Third step. No way am I going to be honest about this. No one else does. Why should I? They're not honest about anything and they've got plenty of issues. Accusation. Fourth step. It's their issues and shortcomings that make me act this way. Blame. Fifth. It's their fault and they're blaming me. Anger. And the sixth step. In fact, now that I think about it, I'm actually better than them. Superiority. My ego is stroked. I'm an egomaniac. Now, there are some people listening or reading this who are going, hmm, yes, that's my boss. Uh, Are you sure it's your boss? Because you cannot change what you do not confront. You understand, you cannot control what happens outside. You can only control your own thoughts and actions. Sorry, you can only control your thoughts and your actions. It's your choice. You can influence others and some things outside, but you do not control them. Time for you to become a thought warrior. It is time for you to dare to have joy at work. And when you dare to have joy at work, you'll feel vulnerable and focus your attention on helping and recognising others. So let's talk about this difficult bit, shall we? When you have joy at work, you will feel vulnerable. Many leaders ask me to help their teams to trust each other and improve collaboration. They know it's hugely beneficial and profitable for that to be the case. But they fear being vulnerable to their team because the team isn't trusted by the leader. So why would they trust each other, let alone collaborate? Once you accept that you cannot control what will happen, but you still speak or act in an authentic way, that's being vulnerable. And only, only when you are being vulnerable are you able to build authentic, supportive and trusting relationships. When you have joy is when you feel most vulnerable. But because it's rare, or we only allow ourselves to feel it rarely, it is most often a foreboding joy. We insist on rehearsing tragedy. (laughs) When's the cat going to hit the fan? It is beauty and fragility and deep gratitude and impermanence wrapped up in one emotion. Why? Because joy is rare and we're not used to it and we don't trust it yet. When we practice joy at work, we focus on others. Those who practice sustaining joy have one thing in common. They practice gratitude. Not an attitude, it's a practice. At dinner every day you say or sing grace, thanks to God for your food. Share one thing you're grateful for today. And you recognised others' achievements at work every day and eventually every one. Rinse, repeat, celebrate the small wins. It could all go sideways in five minutes. Celebrate now and recognise good work. Engagement increases, retention improves, performance goes up. And for those who have imposter syndrome, the I'm not good enough, you are not how others say or have said you are. God says, I say how you are. You are qualified to achieve my purpose for you. 
It's time to have the courage to be vulnerable, to practice gratitude and recognising others. It's time to dare to have joy at work. And there's a biblical way to win the battle in your brain. The Apostle Paul, in Philippians 4.12 and in 2 Corinthians 10.5, shares, The battle for your life is won or lost in your mind. And two, your thoughts will control you. So you have to control your thoughts. Okay, are you ready to dare to have joy at work? Excellent. Now, we need to spend a little time understanding and recognising that each of us are biased. And knowing your own biases is incredibly important. In the next Advantage Guidepost on this, we'll be looking at pride and prejudice. Be greatly blessed. I'm Dr. John Kenworthy and it's been my pleasure to share this Joy at Work Advantage Guide with you today. Thank you for joining me and supporting my work. Remember, if you ever think so you might benefit from an outside voice with a fresh perspective to challenge and empower you, your team or your organisation to a new level of performance and engagement, then let's talk now. You can follow the link at my website, joyatwork.coach. And if you know someone you know would benefit from this Joy at Work guide, please share this with them either by sharing the podcast link or if you're listening on the Joy at Work website, it's even easier to just click the share button.